Wasp Mode. Um, uh, today uh, we are at the Wasp uh, number nine here in Kuala Lumpur, and I have here with me uh, Zoran from Epigate, who's going to talk about the deal that they've just they're going to sign today with Anam. Um, so Zoran, welcome. Thank you. Okay. So uh, can you share with us how the Anam Epigate deal um, will be? How you guys will be working together, and uh, how uh, operators are uh, set to benefit from this? Yes. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for stopping by, and uh, we are very excited to be here at VAS number 9. Uh, also, uh, it's a great opportunity to showcase Apigate and Apigate's platform, uh, and part of the platform that uh, that uh, it's a next-generation API platform. Uh, one of the one of the key features is everything related to communications, and obviously here we are at the A2P event. Uh, one of the partners uh, uh, that we have selected and we have signed already uh, is Anam, uh, given that there's a, there's a great uh, opportunity uh, to work together and um, and uh, and uh, and deliver some of the more secure uh, firewall and fraud for protection services uh, you know, with the operators and with the connectivity and connections that we have in our current business. So uh, Anam has proven a, a partner that uh, that has the right decisiveness and speed. Which is required in this business, and uh, and also uh, that relationship is already showing results, and uh, and we look forward to do more of such deals with them uh, in some of the other operators in the region and globally. Okay, so um, after after the signing, uh, what are some of the early services that we uh, expect uh, to to come out of this? The early launch uh, launch services. Yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, the first uh, and foremost, the first service is obviously deployment of the firewall uh, into some of the you know, some of the connected MNOs that uh, uh, where we are serving them with uh, and, and 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 carrying their A2P traffic. Uh, so that's the first and and, uh, and early service that uh, that is going to be deployed. Uh, it's already deployed in in some of the selected uh, operators that we have uh, worked on together, and now we're exploring where else we can take this uh, using the evidence from success in the very first few uh, in order to convince uh, the rest that this is the right partnerships and these are the two companies that uh, many more operators should be working with. Okay, okay. so uh, in terms of region, where do you see the take-up of these uh, services uh, coming from, the early take-up? Yeah, so we are, we are confident that uh, there's a lot of uh, improvement that can be made uh, especially here in the emerging markets mm -hmm. and uh, and in some of the in some of the regions that we are covered mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia, South mm -hmm. Asia, eventually Middle East, uh, perhaps. Uh, but again, for us, it's really uh, taking one step at a time, mm -hmm. identifying the, the the willing operators that have recognized the value of this uh, joint collaboration mm -hmm. and switching them on one by one. Uh, and uh, and I think that's probably going to be starting first here in Asia, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, and then we'll explore further. Okay, so um, you know, recent studies have showed that um, you know, compared to the uh, OTT providers, uh, um, you know, the big uh, web scale players, uh, the level of trust placed by customers on um, operators is much higher. So you, you know, uh, operators have this edge uh, against those uh, the OTT providers and such. So um, how do operators stand to gain when when you know they have this level of trust coming from the customers? Yeah, so I think uh, I think it's a uh, it's a two-sided problem here and two-sided conversation. Correct. One is that uh, uh, we are seeing uh, an increased uh, uh, emphasis mm -hmm. on uh, on delivering customer trust, uh, and this is because many of the many of the OTT players and many of the participants in the digital ecosystem themselves have an issue of uh, of stopping uh, fraudulent activity and uh, and blocking some of that fraud coming through different systems and different platforms and maybe different routes that they are using uh with the end result of really uh, uh destroying some of the value at the same time uh, gambling with uh, with experiences that uh, that the users are users are experiencing and who's going to be the first one uh, uh, getting a call is actually going to be an operator so in that in that sense uh, yes i totally agree i think all of us have identified and uh, realized that we need to help uh, uh, on both sides uh, uh, deliver trust uh, so that mnos will be more relaxed and uh, and and trust that the platforms in between and solutions in between are taking care of that mm -hmm. before it hits them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think for us uh, as Appigate and, uh, and and one of the key uh, differentiator of our platform, mm -hmm. uh, which is an end-to-end -end monetization platform mm -hmm. uh, that delivers value to operators, is an ability to stop and block fraud. 
uh, in a messaging in a messaging environment. We do this with Anam as a partner in a monetization and uh, in, a, in a content environment. Uh, we have our own solution, uh, and I think uh, 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 you know when you combine this, uh, it puts us in a very good position to have these trust-related conversations that uh, that actually remove this friction uh, and allow us uh, and allow everybody in the ecosystem to actually succeed and eventually deliver value. So when we are looking at the API side of things, you know, APIs platform by operators, what are some of the enhancements that uh, have taken place in the last uh, few years and what are some of the enhancements that we can um, we can expect to take place over the coming years? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, traditionally uh, the API platforms were, were really there uh, to originally integrate the legacy systems uh, to participate in a, in a digitization or in digital transformation as, uh, as many like to, to say it. Uh, but then more and more uh, we have realized that uh, there are some additional solutions, additional services that can be introduced uh, through the API platform that can also benefit uh, the operators uh, in, a, in a form of actually generating more revenue for them. Uh, number one is uh, authentication, something that uh, has not been uh, monetized before by the operators. Today, this is possible. Uh, there are third parties, there are OTT players, there are, there's an ecosystem environment that is willing to pay for the right authentication, and that API is now val uh, valid and it's available. Second one is everything I said about fraud protection. This is not necessarily uh, bringing new revenue, but this is preserving revenue or something that is actually rightfully earned by an operator, but because uh, because of fraudulent activities or, or some other ways of, uh, of breaking into the system, uh, you are forced to refund and something that was maybe supposed to be yours is not there anymore. So these are some of the APIs that are there. Uh, and then obviously a more robust uh, uh, monetization set of APIs uh, are also available there so that uh, so that operators can uh, can seamlessly participate in a monetization versus uh, what they used to do in uh, used to do before so uh, do you think operators um are in the in the game of monetizing you know the APIs and all that uh, how in terms of Asia pack market for example um how far have the uh, operators gone uh, to to you know get this done, or are they are they still? Um, is there a lot of improvement, or you know what what needs to be done to get them to really go into monetization? Yeah, so this is an excellent question. I think one of our themes, uh, especially in 2019, is moving the conversation from digitization to monetization. Uh, we believe that uh, there's very little time left. But when I say this, uh, I think uh, everybody's been in digital transformation and digitization for way too long, forgetting that it's time to monetize. Uh, and those that still believe they have two, three years, four years left to get into a platform model, I think they are probably two years too late. So, uh, so for us uh, and, and and, and what we talk to everybody, especially the m and side, is it's time to monetize. Uh, uh, everybody else and the usage of your data, the usage of video, the usage of gaming, it's, it's growing at such a pace that, uh, that unless there's a way of monetizing now, uh, there's going to be another too late story. And, uh, and I don't think uh, many will actually be able to sustain to sustain what's happening to them. So yes, uh, Asia Pacific region. Some of them have gotten forward and uh, and understood that this is the this is the way forward. Uh, and some that haven't uh, will will be watching for the outcome. All right. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks so much, Zora. It's uh, it's good uh, talking about this, and uh, and I think our readers will benefit from you know uh, from your inputs and uh, the insights. So thank you again from the first one. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.